Jules, I I find it weird talking about this because this is something that's been telegraphed for a long time. Yeah, so we know it was coming. Uh, so United States, it's a three year deal um, plus an option for another deal, which I think is pretty for another year, which is pretty much standard. Yeah. Um, I mentioned before how important I think the recruitment's going to be. Yeah. And what were you not so keen when I said that Ten Hag has to be involved and will be involved? I generally don't. I'm not a fan of coaches being involved in recruitment. I mean, obviously, you need to but be involved. But there might be players that, like, like Chouameni, we wrote about it last week. Okay. He's so, someone that he's been watching a lot. One thing I'm pretty confident about, and the coaches that I've met, um, and I've written books with them, I've spoken to many over the years, is that they generally, they're so focused in season on their own team. That is where all their inputs are from. Yeah. Um, and sometimes the younger players who might be coming through, sometimes when they have to prepare for an opponent, they'll focus a little bit on their opponent, although Ajax tend to not adjust their game to the opposition that much. And so when we say, oh, Eric Ten Hag loves Chouamini, I'm thinking, how much time does Eric Ten Hag devote to watching Monaco? It doesn't have to be him. Especially he, he since... He watched a 10-minute clip. He has the time to watch a 10-minute clip that's made fine. by his assistant on Chouamini. That's fine. But I think what becomes more important then is... And also, Chouamini obviously not a target for Ajax at any, at any point, no, right? No, 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 no. So I would assume that, again, in my, maybe, maybe he's different and... I know Wenger was a bit of a weirdo who'd stay up all night watching games from around the world. And there yeah, have been yeah. others that weren't like that. But from my experience, more important than his idea of what a player can do. Because we've seen, I think increasingly so, when co there's a reason why coaches keep going back to players that they've worked with before or players who you know, their assistants have worked with. Because ultimately, a lot of the time, that's not what they're geared to do is evaluate players who play in other teams, no, in I, other I, systems, I see, right? I, I hear it's you. Just, it's not the core skill set. What the skill set is, is to almost know what the manager wants, even if the manager can't fully articulate it. No, no, um, I get you. It's almost what? like you buy somebody a present that they haven't told you they want, but that you know they're going to love, and it's exactly what they want. True. I think my point was more, he cannot have a Donny van der Beek incident and player. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer didn't want Van der Beek. The club still signed Donny Van der Beek and we saw what happened. This, this, you cannot start a, a rebuilding job as big as this one and bring players that your manager doesn't want. This is not, this is not possible. This, this should have never happened before anyway, regardless who the manager was, but even less now. This is a critical time where he might not be involved fully, like you said. I hear, you, I hear what you're saying. But I just don't think he should. I don't, I don't think that that's the best use of his but skills. But no, because he's going to say, okay, I need a number eight. This is the profile that I want with these qualities. Right. So, you know, good in transition, strong, I don't know, whatever. And then they're going to bring a list of 10. And he goes, okay, I know him. I know him. I need to know more about him. I want him. I like him the right. most. And then they're going to make that happen, right? This is what's it's going to happen. That's how it should work, yes. Yeah. But you cannot, again, but, you cannot have a Donny van der Beek incident here. But again... You don't have the time. I would refer you back to something else about Eric Ten Hag. Eric Ten Hag, because of his profile and where he's worked, um, you know, he's 52 years old. He's really only had two jobs as a number one. I mean, he was at Bayern Munich uh, Reserves, Reserve right? Team, yeah. Bayern Munich in the third division. Um, at Utrecht, I have no idea what kind of budget he was working with. But when he arrived at Ajax... You're arriving at a very strong club filled with very strong-minded people, yeah. right? From Van der Sar was there, Overmars was there. I'm sure, 1,000% sure, that when he arrived at Ajax, Van der Sar didn't go to him and say like, ah, Eric, okay, who do you want to sign? Give me a list of your targets and I'll get them for you. No, no, no. I'm sure that Van der Sar said, Eric, we have these players. Our scouts, our director of football likes these guys. We're going to sign him. We're going to sign him. We're going to sign him. Nah, You're that's going to, where I, I disagree with you. What, at the you start, sign, you signed Tadic without Ten Hag saying, yeah, Tadic would work in my system, in my formation. The, to, to be perfectly honest, I don't think Tadic, when he arrived, was a natural fit for Ten Hag's formation. I actually think, I actually think, especially a club like Ajax, you have to think beyond Ten Hag where he was now. Remember, when Ten Hag arrived at Ajax, he wasn't the Ten Hag he is now. So the club had to hedge their bets. What I'm, what I'm driving at is I think Eric Ten Hag has the experience of the adaptability of not being the big man in charge. 
And I think that is a strength. It's a strength that he can go and he can work with imperfect players, that he can work with, you know, the team that he did so well with and then obviously everybody ended up leaving, right? Did you think Ajax said, oh, or do you think Tanak said, oh, I really want like 31-year-old Lasse Schöne in my midfield because he makes everything tick? I don't think so. So he's actually somebody who in some ways, even though he comes from a big club, has had to deal with the reality that most managers work with earlier in their career, most successful managers, which is they do not have an unlimited budget. They do not get to pick all the players that they want whenever they want. Yeah. Now, but to some degree, you can now. do that. So it's a different scenario. Yeah. But I think that can bring with it a certain humility. I don't know the guy. I don't know how humble no, maybe, he is. Maybe, maybe. But I think if you're smart, you can play to that strength as well. Because but the difference, Gab, the difference now is that he's got such a strong identity of play that he needs the players to fit in. This is not about, oh, let's sign him because he's a big name or him because he's a world champion or him because of this. No, you sign him because he will fit rightly into what Ten Hag is going to do there. So it doesn't work if you sign Paul Pogba again or another Paul Pogba. And Ten Hag, I would want to believe, is going to say, no, 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 that's not what I want. I want Gravenberg because Gravenberg is perfect for what I want my left-sided number eight to do. Fullbacks, we saw with Masrawi, we saw with Daily Blind or whoever played on the left, but Masrawi, especially on the right, what a very, very particular profile he needs for his right back to be able, a bit like Trent Alexander-Arnold. Masrawi is a central midfielder playing right back. Yeah. So not Diogo Dalot, not one Bissaka. And if, if someone at the club said, hey, okay, what about we sign Benjamin Pavard? I would want to believe that Tanak said, what? No, 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 no. This is not the guy I need no, here. But, you see what I mean? But, this is the I'm, difference here. I, Ajax, he had the players perfect for what he wanted to do. I, not I, here. Okay. I can't pretend to follow Ajax as closely as some people do. But my understanding is that even at Ajax over the years, Daily Blind at left back and Daily Blind at center back are two different things. Yeah. Daily Blind at left back is a left footed Pavard. Exactly. It's a little bit cooler. Well, um, better on the ball. Much better on the ball. And cooler yeah. than Pavard. But um, you go from that to Tagliafico, who's a completely different player, yeah. right? Uh, so I think there's been an evolution there as well. When, when, he played, when, when, when you had Edson Alvarez playing in front of the back four at Ajax, whereas before you had Frankie de Jong, very, very different. Edson Alvarez doesn't have the passing, doesn't no. cover the ground. That he's much more of a defensive player. So even within that, when you talk about strong identity, he's shown a lot of pragmatic flexibility, I think, within that. And I think this is something that, if you're Ten Hag, you want to emphasize. And look, we're going to spend a long time speculating about transfers and so on. Yeah. But I think it's very obvious there is one starting point here, which is the future of Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. Because this impacts everything. Because you can talk about strong identity and strong brand. His brand is puny compared to the Cristiano brand. And United are in a situation where Cristiano has another year in his contract. Yeah. He makes an enormous amount of money. I think it's easily it's it's nearly a third of United's wage uh, bill, and that is a very big wage bill. So you have two factors here. One is if Cristiano leaves, then you can have more flexibility to bring in more players or more yeah, expensive yeah. players because even though United have a lot of money, nobody's money is unlimited. If he stays, you're in a situation where you're not going to bench Cristiano. So you have to think think how you're going to use him. Yeah. Yeah, right. you're right. And you can talk about strong Ajax identity. There is no Cristiano but Ronaldo this, in the Ajax identity. We agree that this point has already been sorted in the sense that when Ten Hag met with Richard Arnold, the Glazers, Merzo, Fletcher, whoever you want, this they, has been addressed and sorted out already. They know what's going to happen. 100%. When Mark Ogden and I did our United kind of keeper dump series, I said, first thing, new manager that we interviewed, we didn't know who the new manager was going to be. What is your plan for Cristiano? In case Cristiano wants to stay, you need to give me a plan for Cristiano. You need to give me a plan without Cristiano. You need to give me a plan of how you're going to break news to Cristiano, how you're going to handle him, what you know about him. Yeah, yeah. Because Cristiano Ronaldo, on this admittedly bad United team, is still Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. He's and, the only one scoring goals anyway. So, yeah, I don't, you know, like, I'm, those people who say, how could Cristiano Ronaldo ever be a problem? If you ever say this, you're a freaking idiot. Okay, but it's equally true. Cristiano Ronaldo means you have to make adjustments elsewhere. Yeah, I'd, I'd, right so you now, hope if you're not a fan, you hope that they had that conversation. They and that Eric Ten Hag 
came up with believable answers that he believes in and that he's excited to either make it work with Cristiano, maybe yeah. just for a year, or make it work without Cristiano. And, and, and the club backup, of course, because if he said, I don't want him here, he doesn't fit in what I want to do, I need a centre forward who is involved in the build-up play, who then can counter press, or you agree to get rid of Cristiano then. And, and but you say, can't get rid of Cristiano. Well, you can. You can, t you, you can say, listen, you know, we don't want you here next season, so you can stay, but you're not going to be the number one striker. Right. So if you do that... And he might say, okay, I want to go back to sporting, give me my money. No, no, right. There are two different things, right? So if you're telling Cristiano, Cristiano, you're not in Ten Hag's plans. Do you want to find another club? And that's a very delicate thing. You even went through it all of last summer, let's not yeah. forget, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, all of last summer and in the end George Mendes had to travel around Europe saying who wants Cristiano who wants Cristiano yeah, exactly. you know like like a door to door salesman yeah, yeah. which personally I think is a bit humiliating and so not something yeah, Cristiano deserved at this stage of his career I'm with you not entirely his fault either yeah. um, but that is one of the big issues and somebody smart at the club is going to have to figure out how to handle the situation there's a million permutations tell you what Jules it's going to be fascinating to yeah. watch well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.